All right, so today is March the 9th, and what I'm going to be doing today is demonstrating for our design club members how to create a magazine cover. Uh, we'll be selling these magazine covers at our fall or spring fling, and what we'll be doing is, is uh, taking pictures of our students that come by and putting them into a magazine cover designed by one of you. Um, the final file will be a layered Photoshop file, <clears throat> but you're very welcome to use Illustrator to design your layout and then place those layers from your illustration file into the layered Photoshop file. And I'll demonstrate the, that uh, shortly. <clears throat> your Photoshop file needs to include a text elements layer, so the title of your magazine, any cover mentions, things like that. They need to be on their own layer. That way we can sandwich the photo in between or behind your text and the background or the border. The layers also must contain a, a border elements so of if, if that's part of your design. And also a layer to insert the photograph that the uh, we, we're gonna be taking of the student. This is gonna be a print on demand process. So we're gonna take the picture. We'll have our templates ready. We're gonna <clears throat> put that picture into Lightroom, do any uh, need, needed uh, editing, and then pop it into the Photoshop file and print it right there on the spot. So your, the styles that you're thinking about doing need to college uh, target a college student what what's going to be interesting or enjoyable for a college student to see in a magazine cover it could be something sports related it could be trojan related it could be comic bookish it could be vogueish but you cannot use the word vogue <clears throat> or any of the existing logos from real magazines your magazine name must be fictitious um Design elements must be sourced from legitimate resources or created from scratch. So if you're using some, some free pick clip art or things like that, um, don't grab images from Google. There will be more details to follow as I do this demonstration. And I'll go ahead and get ready for that. <clears throat> First thing I'm going to do is go to my applications folder and I'm going to find Adobe Photoshop to start with and just set up a document. It's 8 by 10. So I'm going to go ahead and set it up for print and uh, 300 DPI and CMYK, which is for print. So I'll open up Photoshop here real quick. I'm, and while I'm waiting for that, I'll probably just go on and open Illustrator as well. So I'll have both programs open. So I'll, since Illustrator popped open, I'm just going to go ahead and do an artboard that is eight by 10. This needs to be uh, CMYK and high resolution. Um, maybe I'll have a bleed, I don't know yet. Probably, I'll go ahead and add a bleed. And I just need one artboard, not 10, one. So there is my artboard for Adobe Illustrator right there. I like to use my workspace that is printing and proofing which it already is right here that's where i like to work from illustrator so now let's see what photoshop's doing all right photoshop is ready so i'm going to go to new file i'm going to go to print as you can see it automatically well it's doing an rgb but what we want to do is we want to make it cmyk or okay well this is just automatically like that um this part is the one we want cmyk we want it to be 8 by 10. And if you do have a bleed in your Illustrator file, that will be trimmed off when you place it into here. 300 pixels per inch, and we are good to go. We can also name it here if we'd like to. Let's, let's name it, I don't know, uh, Trojan Magazine. I don't know. I may change this. I'll just put Magazine Cover and click Create. So this is my Photoshop file. I'm not working in Photoshop right now. Some of you are very welcome to do that. But I'm going to go ahead and set up my layers either way. So here are my layers. I know I need a layer for the image for the guy or the girl. I need a text layer for my headline and title and things like that. I'm going to go ahead and delete this layer. And I also need uh, one for my background, maybe if because the picture is going to have a solid background so let's put design elements and we'll do one for the text and we'll 
do one for insert photo here. And that would have the uh, insert student photo. So I've got text layer, design elements layer, and the insert student photo may need to be pulled down. Depends on what my design ends up being like. I may have a couple of design element layers. I don't know yet, so it's just the beginning of a process. I'm going to go ahead and save this document. Command S for save, and I'm going to put it on my desktop as a Photoshop file. Click OK. All right, now I can minimize Photoshop. I'm not going to work in Photoshop. I prefer to use Adobe Illustrator. So first things first, I need to open up my document, of course. <clears throat> I need a title from a magazine. And I need some type of, I don't know, let's look up some magazine covers. See what everybody else is doing, right? Uh, magazine cover design. Click on images. Uh, tools. Let's go to big. I just like to have a nice big reference image. And I can drag and drop these into my document at any time. Um, just bear in mind the photo that we do take is going to be on a solid background. We can mask it out in Lightroom. So that might be an option when you design. So if, you, if you're looking at something like this, we could have a background, then the text, then the photo, as long as we are able to mask it out cleanly without taking two hours doing it. Uh, print on demand is a fast process. So that's a beautiful magazine cover. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and drag it into my document. Is it not going to let me? Of course not. Why does it always do that? Drag and drop. All right, it's not going to let me. So that's because it's got permissions issues. So this is a nice magazine. Let's say I want to do this one. There we go. Command negative, 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 negative. Just zooming out a little bit so I can get it to where I need it. And let's zoom back in with a command zero. So fashion magazine. I don't see why we can't put fashion as one of the words. And Ellen had a really great idea, like cool words that are hip right now with, with young people. I don't remember what they were, but let's say I want to do this one. I'm just going to use this as a, as a reference. There's so many others to choose from, though, right? Um, let's see. What, there's another one. There's a Vogue. But it could be called something other than Vogue. It could be called Rogue or anything. But the cover mentions, the barcode, all these little details need to be part of your design so it looks like a real magazine cover. Hold on a minute. I'm trying to get back to my document here. Just let me have this cover, please. Okay, there it is. Command negative, 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 negative. If I would place in these images, it would work better because they would be the right size in a box I just determined but because I'm just dragging and dropping, which is a very bad habit. Um, but it's okay when you're just using things for reference. So get get some good ideas. That's pretty cool. A fitness magazine, um, muscles and fitness. I mean, we could get seriously creative with this stuff. So let's try that one. I like that one. All right, that one came in pretty well. So how would I, in fact, I think I'll do this one. This looks like more fun than the other ones. So I'll keep these on the side just for now. I don't want to pull this one up and use it as a guide. So I, I know that font, that's a pretty good font. We're not going to have some guy half naked doing a, a muscle shoot, but if somebody wants to go into a fitness magazine, this is how you would do it. This is how you would build it. Typography first. Let's just go ahead and drop that on there. Um, I'm just going to call it muscles and fitness. Select all, command T for text. Let's go ahead and make it really big. And this font type is what they call a slab serif. So here's slab serif, and that's in the filters section. So I'm just clicking on slab serif, and I'm going to see what they've got. I said slab serif. None found. Are you serious? 
Wow. Okay. Clear. Clear all. So their muscle and fitness is even shows me what it's going to look like. So this is, is what they have for slab serifor. There's not much to share show here, but muscle and fitness that looks kind of cool. I really like this athletic look that they've already got going there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear it. I'm going to go back to my text tool. Just get out of here. And I'm thinking it's called stencil. So now that's that's more of the military. That's kind of cool. Maybe it's athletic. Let's do athletic. There it is. That's the one I wanted. Okay. So let's go ahead and see how the, the, the kerning is super, super tight on this. We definitely are going to have to address that. And as you can see on this one, it's got a gray uh, kind of copy of a gray version behind it. So let's get it the typography done first. Let's center. Um, and it looks like muscle and fitness is in two separate pl places and it evens up right here. It doesn't have an ampersand, so I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to take this to the side as a copy and I'm going to outline this one. First, I might do some kerning. Clicking in between the line, clicking option, and my left or right arrows. Giving it a little bit of space. Um, some of these are just a bit too tight. And I know I'm going to have to put copy behind them, so that's why I'm doing this. All right, so muscles and fitness. I'm going to go ahead and outline this text. Type, create outlines. Select it first. And I just go Command Shift O. That creates outlines, as you can see right there. All right, so this is white text. So let's make it white. No stroke for now. And it looks like there's a gray stroke. So I'm going to add that to the back of this. So I'm going to make a copy. Command C. And I'm going to paste in back. Edit, paste in back. So now you can see there is a copy back there. All right, I'm going to make that gray. Click OK. And let's drop that. I'm going to pull this gray down right here to put it on the stroke. And I'm going to bump that stroke up just a little bit so you can see the stroke. So now we have white with a, a gray background. And the reason I did that, and I'm going to show you right here, is... Let's put a red behind there. Let's go red and let's cut the ball paste and back. So this is what it looks like with the white and a, a copy behind. And this is what it's going to look like if you just put the stroke on the white. So let's hide the white real quick and trash that. If we just put the gray stroke on the white and we go to how many points? I think it was three. Or two you lose some of the lettering I don't know if you can see it very clearly here let's lock this so let's just take the M for instance let's get this piece and just bring it over here and let's take this M and bring it over here and let's drop that down just a notch see I want two point but and is this originally this is three point. Okay. So when you add a stroke onto a piece of text, which this is on the text, you take away from the white space. So your letter looks narrower. It, it doesn't look as it's supposed to look. So what we do is instead we put a copy of that behind and make it gray. If that's clear, I'm not sure, but don't put strokes on text unless it's it works. Uh, most times it doesn't work, so just don't do it. Um, I'm going to trash this because I don't need it. I'm going to get rid of this red because I don't need it. And I'm going to start playing with these pieces of text here. So currently they're grouped. I'm going to ungroup them. And I'm going to put fitness at the same size as muscles. 
holding my shift key not to keep everything proportional. I don't want to stretch these letters. All right, now let's look at the, the letting. It's a little bit tighter, so I'm just going to use my arrow keys to bump that up. Also looks like it's got a drop shadow. So I don't want to put the drop shadow on the front white piece. I want to put it on the gray part. So since I ungrouped everything, it's going to cause me issues. So I'm going to go back in time a minute to show you a better way to do that so you don't have to ungroup. If I want to grab this whole piece, you can see it's going to grab everything. If I don't want to, if I want to not ungroup because it makes everything ungroup, what I need to do is go up here and get this tool, the group selection tool. This way, I've got this little group selection tool. I can grab what I want, and it's not going to affect anything else. Only the piece that I want. So I'm doing the same thing I just did a minute ago. And as you'll see here in just a second, everything stays together. Everything stays together. So now what I want to do is I can add a drop shadow to the white part. Effect stylize drop shadow. And that's what I'm going to get. I need to adjust it, of course, but for right now, I'm just showing you what, what it looks like. Or go to Window Appearance if you want to get rid of something you've done. Where is it? Where'd it go? Here it is. Appearance. So it currently has a drop shadow on it. Let's take that drop shadow and throw it in the trash. All right, so now I'm going to hide the white layer and click on the gray layer. And I'm going to go to Effect stylize drop shadow and bring that white back and you can see a little bit of difference it, it it's the shadow's not on the gray anymore it's just on the background whereas this shadow is on top of the gray it's with the white piece right so we don't want that we want to just keep it on the background piece all right so muscles and fitness i need an ampersand it's not the major problem right now I'm going to pull this up and make it a little bit bigger. So this would be one of the text elements I would place into my Photoshop file uh, once I've got it all cleaned up and beautiful. So I'm not finished yet. Group selection tool again. I'm going to make sure that the kerning on these letters is perfect or as, as close to perfect as I can make it. So I'm grabbing these pieces and I'm just going to just play around with them just a tiny bit to make sure they all look good. And this can be a, a time consuming little process sometimes, but it does make a difference. This S looks a little bit too close. Command zero, back to full. All right, so now I'm gonna copy this, this whole thing. I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna go into my Photoshop file and I'm gonna go into my text layer and I'm gonna paste command V for Victor. And I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna do it as a, I'll just do it as a smart object. And that way, if I need to edit it later, I can edit it later. So click OK. There's my muscles and fitness text. Push the check mark. Now we're good. So what I need to do, I need to rename this to be title. And as you can see, it's made its own layer. But if I want to adjust it, I click on this. Oh, i got to save first. OK. If I go into this smart object now, because I imported it or placed it as a smart object, I double click on this smart object, check it out. It opens up the Illustrator file and I can do whatever I want. Watch this. So it's currently white, right? Let's make it red. Save. Go back to Photoshop. It automatically updated it. That's what's so cool about smart objects. So if you're going to put something in, make it a smart object. Now I'm going to go back to my Illustrator file and Command Z because I don't want it to be red. And I'm just going to leave this here so I can see what I'm doing. I'm not going to use this Illustrator file for the actual magazine. I'm going to use this one. So I'm going to save again. I got rid of the red and now it updates back to where it was, which is really, really interesting. OK. So back to my file. Where did my magazine cover go? Minimize. It's odd what happened. Oh, 
Oh, there it is. Okay, so this is the vector smart object. Okay, I just need to close that. All right. So I've got muscles fitness as you, again. I need some cover mentions. I really like this kind of look. It's got that the caution tape kind of feel to it, right? So let's do some little boxes and use my eyedropper tool to grab that color. And they've got, they're not perfectly square, but they look okay. I really like that font choice too. And I'm just doing this as a copy because I want you to see how it works. So kill those biceps in 30 minutes. So I'll do that all in one text box. And then I'll add some letting in between to make it look better. So what we want to do here is we want to find a better font for the cover mentions. Something that's going to fit this style. It's masculine kind of um, sports style. So let's go to filters again. I want a sans serif this time. Um, that looks more like a display font, but I could find something similar, I'm sure. Kind of like that. That looks pretty cool. Let's go ahead and drop the size down because this is a cover mention. We don't need it to be gigantic. So kill those biceps in 30 minutes or minutes. Minutes. So it's left aligned. Go ahead and left align it. And let's look at the letting. It looks pretty good. It might maybe a little bit tighter. Let's put our yellow box. I'm going to lock this this piece of text. Command two. And I'm going to put this box behind it, just like it is on the magazine. All right. Now I'm going to duplicate this box by Option Shift or click hold then Option Shift drag. Then I'm going to pull it again down there. All right. So that's looking pretty good. And then I'll adjust this to fit like the others. They've got it pretty close and tight. So I'm going to do the same thing. This one needs to be a little bit larger. All right, so command negative, negative, unlock, drag this over here. Don't forget you do need some decent margins. So command R brings up your margins, and let's go ahead and drag a margin. So we've got zero up here. Let's go, this is half an inch. Let's do, let's do half an inch. That'll allow for a nice frame if they choose to put a frame on it. Then we go to the eight inch mark and we go back a half inch. There we go. Same thing here. We're going to the zero on the left ruler down to right at a half inch right there. And at the bottom as well. This is 10 inches. So we want to go up to nine and a half inches. And there we have a half inch margin around each of these pieces. So I'm going to grab I need to lock my guides, so view, guides, lock. Yours may not be locked or they may be uh, locked, I don't know. Just want to make sure that this is uh, centered in the space, aligned to artboard, center in the space. I want to make sure that these, this cover mention right here is right on that border. So I'm holding my, just holding it and moving it. And I'm going to pull up this box here so it doesn't get in the way. So here we go. It's starting. This might need to be a, even a little bit smaller. Oops, I forgot to select both. Got to select both. So muscles and fitness. And it still looks like it needs to be centered again. Let's drop it down with our arrow keys. I think it's about the same size as, he, as this uh, magazine here, right at the same size. And I can use that as a guide too. So I'm just going to use it for guide. So muscles and fitness needs to come down just a little bit more. There we go. All right. Uh, this summer issue, there's a little, little star blast there. Let's make one of those. Star tool. Click one time. So radius one and radius two, I, I'm, I, I might get these flicked, flipped around here, but I'm, I'll, I can fix that. So let's give it 36 points to try to do something like this, right? Uh, and let's click OK and see what happens. OK, so the radius 1 and radius 2 are these, uh, the inside radius and the outside radius. So what I'm going to do is do that again. Click 36 points. So radius 1 is probably 
this one that's way in here. So I'm going to put that at, let's say, 0.125 inches, which is an eighth of an inch. And I'll put this at 0.25 and see what happens there. Same thing. Hold on a minute. Something ain't right. It's been a while since I've done a star. As you can tell, stars don't like me. So I'm going to do it the easy way. I'm going to go to freepick.com and I'm going to find myself a star. So free pick with a K. Free vectors are burst seal. Let's just put that in, see what comes up. And looky there, there's a bunch of seals. I want one like that but not exactly like that. And I can change these colors if I want to at any time. I want to find one that's, that's the one I want right there. So download, download, minimize. Go to my downloads folder. There it is. Open it up. I want the EPS because JPEG is useless. It comes with all this stuff in the background. So in fact, we're going to open both of these with Adobe Illustrator. And we'll take a look. So if I go Command Y and see what's behind this image, let me grab the other one too. Let's select all, cut, close, don't save. And let's put this in the same document. So if I go Command Y, you're going to see the difference between a vector and a JPEG. So the JPEG is just a flat nothing. It's useless unless you need to use it for a photograph, whereas the vector image is all the little pieces that you might need to use and recolor and all, all that good stuff. So all I want really is this piece right here. So I'm gonna ungroup this. I'm gonna copy, close, don't save. And I'm gonna paste this into my document. So I'm looking for something kind of like this. So I'm probably gonna have to make my own gradient on this. Group selection tool, let's get rid of that ribbon. Uh, let's get rid of all this text as well. Just double clicking with the group selection tool to get rid of any pieces I don't want. Oops, that's the only one piece I do want. Uh, I don't want this piece. All right, so let's make this, this beautiful red. And I probably will add a gradient to this at some point. So let's shrink it down just a little bit. And let's hang it off the bleed. As you can see in their example, it cuts off right here. Not necessarily the bleed on their document, but um, I'm going to go ahead and have it hanging off the edge. And if we go to view trim view, that's what it's going to look like. So view trim view, pull it back. I might go a little bit further in here. All right, so that's looking OK. Not, not perfect, but um, it's getting there. I might stretch this out just a little bit, which is against the rules. But for this, I really I wanted to to do that, making sure it's right on that margin, and maybe even pull it a little bit more this way. And then I can put my ampersand right here. I can put some text on here. In fact, let's just duplicate this text. And what do they got on there? They've got this summer issue, the summer issue. Select all. All right, so there is some text I could put on top. Let's move it to the top. Object, range, send to front. Let's make it white. Let's center it. Let's tighten up that letting because there's way too much space in between those lines in order to fit onto this seal. And it's also too large, so I'm going to shrink it down. I tighten up the letting again. Now it's getting there. I, I want it to be a little bit um, not as tall. So I'm Command plus, plus, plus. So if I want to add uh, 
I want to make maybe smoosh it a little bit. I can do that if I want to. You just got to be really careful with that. So we're just going to do this down arrow on this this tool here in your thing. And that's also adjusting the letting. So let's tighten that letting back like it should be. And that looks perfect. All right. So the summer issue. Now what's what happens if I try to rotate this? You see that? That's not good. Command Z. So what we want to do is we want to either outline this text or we can get our rotate tool. Click on there and it's R for rotate and we can literally adjust it however we want to adjust it with the rotate tool and it's still live text. So that's a plus for using the rotate tool. All right, so now I'm going to take this. I'm going to copy. Well, in fact, I do want to outline at this point. I'm going to make a copy of that. Because I don't want Photoshop to not have the font, so I'm just going to go ahead and Command Shift O. I'm going to grab this seal and the text and copy, and I'm going to go into my Photoshop file, and I'm going to paste. Do it as a smart object again. That way, if you need to change it, you can. So now I'm going to give it a title again. This is the um, the summer issue seal and I can now position that wherever I want to on top of the text so I've already adjusted the text size so I'm gonna go ahead and trash that layer and go back into my illustrator file and get the right size one let's copy back to uh, back to Photoshop smart object paste push the check mark, pull it up. So it's coming together very nicely. I've also got the cover mentioned. This could be part of the Photoshop file too. I'm gonna to copy that into the Photoshop file as a smart object again. So this could have been done in, in uh, Photoshop. And it probably would have been better if I had in case I wanted to change the words. But um, I think I still have access to the words if I double click on the smart object here. It's going to open up this file and I can actually edit it. So let's say I wanted to edit that. Go to save. Back to Photoshop. It adjusts it. So smart objects is a good way to work in two different programs. Save. Close, back to Photoshop, fixed. All right, so that's the Summer Vector Smart Object. I want to make sure I've got these things named correctly. Title, um, text, this is pretty much a useless uh, layer now. So I'm just going to trash it. And I'm also going to trash design elements because once I paste things in, they become their own layers. So it's kind of a waste of time. The insert student photo here, that is not a waste of time. So let's go ahead and just grab a picture from one of our um, graphic resources. So I'm going to go to pexels.com. I'm going to search for um, young man. And here's some young men. So what? I don't know. It's got to fit into a fitness magazine. So I don't know. Let's see. Young man. Let's put young man on white background. So when I take this into Photoshop, it won't be difficult to clean up. I can mask it out with the um, refine tools. That's a nice picture. Let's do that one. Download. Are you going to let me download? Hold on a minute. Did it work? Let's see if I can place that image. File. Place embedded. Let's see if it went to my downloads. And it did. Excellent. So there's the guy. Space bar. Let's me see him. Place him into my Photoshop file. And 
there he is. So what I want to do first is I probably am going to clean him out. So I'm going to go to my toolbar here. I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. And I want to go to my um, quick selection tool, this one right here. Once I click on quick selection, you'll see at the very top of the screen here, it, uh, a couple of things pop up, select subject and select a mask. So I want to select the subject, which is this layer right here. So I'm going to select subject and you'll see what happens. It's amazing. So it's basically cutting all the way around him, including the empty spots in between the, his, his posing. And from that point, I'm going to go to select a mask. And then I'm going to go to the bottom of this option here. Where is it at? Got it. OK. Output settings. I want to make a layer with a layer mask in case I need to clean it up or add something back. So now I've got this guy cut out, right? So if I want to put him on top of the title, there he is, right? That's what we want. We want to be able to do this exact same thing. So if I want to put him over the title, I can do that. So you can tell right here my selected mask missed a spot, but because I've got a mask here, right here, I can go into that mask. I can put the white up front right here in my toolbar. I can get a B for brush. I can literally pull the color back from the image, the original image. So B for brush again. Looks like we might have some little issues here. No, maybe not. Um, so anything I want to pull back, do you see that? I'm, I'm going to make my brush bigger so you can see. If I want to pull this whole section back, I can't. Command Z, Command Z. I want to pull that back, I can. Command Z. And I can also adjust the size by control clicking and saying I want this brush to be harder, I want it to be smaller, things like that. So we've got the guy. I don't think I'd leave that white gap down there. I'd probably move him. Or because he doesn't have a side to his arm, I might just pull it over a little bit or fill this whole thing with. In fact, let's do it. I want to just fill this with the same color as the shirt. So I want to get onto the actual image itself right here, not the not the mask. I'm going to get my lasso tool. I'm just going to draw around this empty spot right here and finish it up. Now I'm going to go to edit. Fill. And I want to go to content aware. There's lots of different options. I could choose black or white or this and that. But content aware is going to let me, it's going to sample from the, what's around him. If I click OK, that did not work. So let's try that again. Edit, fill. There's so many tools you can use for this, but that one wasn't the right one. Let's just go with black. Why isn't it working? Don't understand why it isn't working. Maybe because I don't have this selected, possibly. Edit, fill. Hmm. I don't understand that. Command D for D, select. All right, let's try the patch tool. So let's draw. <clears throat> Spot healing. Let's make it bigger. Get a sample of color. And why isn't it working? I don't get it. All right, fine. I'll do the clone stamp. My right, last resort option. Click. This is really odd. It's got to have something to do with the mask. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and apply this mask since I know it's, it's going to be OK. And now let's see if this will work. Um, I'm sure there's just a technical difficulty. Edit, fill, content aware, click OK. There we go. So it must have been something to do with the mask. But I didn't need the mask anymore because I've already cleaned him up. Now, if this were a real magazine cover, and it looked terrible on the edges and things. I would have gone in real close up and done a little zoom action to clean him up 
all the way, right? But he looks pretty good as he is. So I'm going to go ahead and save this onto my desktop to work on it later because I have to stop this session now. So I'm going to replace what was already there. Click OK. But it's get, it's coming, all right? Uh, image, image size, double check that 8 by 10 inches resolution 300. It's the right m color mode. This thing is almost done. So I'm going to go ahead and close it with that. I'm going to make sure I'm saving all the pieces and parts to my magazine cover on the desktop. And that should be good.